Will I cry? Will I leave behind broken and crumbled signs? Hiding all my roads to you. Uh oh. And if I fight, will I come? Well, that's service. <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> Here you go, a BLT. Thank. Oh, thank you. It's a nice place. Uh, it's uh, country. Country fork. No. Country. Country, country fork. Country fork. Uh, we're just about to go in to Long Point. Um, yes. <laughs> Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is our last night of the Southwestern Ontario camping road tour uh, through all the Ontario parks along Lake, Lake, Lake Erie. Uh, this is not the end of the road tour. We're coming back to do a whole bunch of conservation areas, um, more so along uh, towards Lake Huron on the other side of Southwestern Ontario. This is a big part of Ontario, I tell you. And uh, yeah, Long Point, uh, used to camp here a lot. And um, um, then I also used to ban birds at the bird observatory. I used to ban birds at Mountsbury Wildlife Center which is uh, near Guelph, Ontario, because um, I grew up in Milton, and that's where I, I work from. And um, But we used to come down here to Van Birds and also at Hot Cliff, uh, which is nearby as well. And it was kind of cool. I got to interview the, the, the birders there and chit-chat with them and, and, and um, film them banding birds. So I was pretty pumped about that because it brings back a lot of memories. Uh, I love that job. I had that job for many years. And, uh, yeah, I learned a lot about, about birds when you have them in your hand. So it was kind of cool to watch them do it. Hey Mark, where are we? Uh, this is Long Point Bird Observatory, the oldest, largest, and most productive bird observatory in the Western Hemisphere. That's cool. And who are you? I'm Mark Conboy, and I'm the program manager here. I run the place, keep it going day to day, ban 20 to 30,000 birds a year with my staff, and uh, we have a great time of it. This is living the life. <laughs> That's fantastic. And why? What's so special about Long Point? Well. A whole lot, really. Long Point is uh, the longest freshwater sand spit in the world and, what, the 11th or 13th largest lake on the planet, depending on who you read. We're a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We are an International Monarch Butterfly Preserve, a Ramsar Wetland of International Importance, and there must be close to 80 or 90 species at risk found here on Long Point or on the mainland adjacent. And we have some of the largest concentrations of migrating birds you can find anywhere in Canada. Uh, over 400 species have been found here and close to 1,100,000 birds have been banded. And every year we count two or three million more passing just overhead. It's a fantastic place. So what's the best part, part of your, about your job? The best part about my job? Yeah. Uh, birds, <laughs> in general. Get to see birds, like, mm, well, while banding, much closer than you would while birding in the wild. So, yeah, it's really good for learning. I learn a lot. 
Okay, Ryan, quick, what's your favorite bird to ban? Quick. Oh, favorite bird to ban? One, two, three. Well, Baltimore Oriole. Oh, oh, yeah, why the Baltimore? Oh, they're just big and colorful, and yeah, uh, it was quick. <laughs> it would probably be one of the warblers, but yeah, probably black burning warbler would be my favorite. But no, no favorite you, oh, you already said one. You can't go back in time. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know, they're just, a, they're just like, it's the bird you don't expect to see, I don't know, in Canada. They don't seem like a very Canadian bird. They seem more like a, a tropical-esque bird, but... Yeah. Okay, what, what's the most um, uh, uh, vicious bird to, to, to ban? You know? Cardinal. Really? Oh, yeah. Card Cardinal or rose-breasted grosbeak, one of the two. Wow. Yeah, they have unbelievably powerful bites, and you'll often hear screams in the banding line. <laughs> <laughs> or see tears. Yeah, I've had blood drawn from cardinals and grosbeaks. So you guys have seen uh, Ryan cry? Oh, I've made him cry. <laughs> Sorry. Ryan, it's five o'clock, time to get up. We got a band. Yep, that's Tears. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get up pretty early. Now, yep. what, when do you end your day? When do we end yeah. your day? Uh, six hours after half an hour before sunrise. So five and a half hours after sunrise. <laughs> yeah. You start half an hour before sunrise, which is yeah pretty early. In the uh, early season in spring, it's not so bad. You're starting probably in the sixes at some point. But then later in the spring, sometimes you start at 5.20, 5.10. It gets early and earlier throughout the year. And then in the fall, you start really early and then you end a lot later, which is quite nice. That's why the fall season is preferred, I think, by most banders. There's more birds. You get up a little later when it goes on. You get to band owls, more raptors. My favorites, personally. But so you're being ju judgmental on your birds right now. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I have to have favorites. Twenty-five, six, one. Yep. Yeah. Three, eight, five, eighty-seven. Three, eight, five, eight, seven. Okay, yes. great. All right. So these are purple martins. And these kids must be, geez, I don't know, a couple weeks old now, something like that. Uh, but it's going to be at least another week, at least before they're even thinking about leaving the nest, I'd say. They grow incredibly quickly. And they're fed mostly on flying insects. Purple martins love to grab big insects like dragonflies, sometimes even bumblebees, things like that. But they'll eat lots of small stuff too, mosquitoes, midges, and we sure have a lot of them around here. Um, so let's see here, Felicia's just putting this, this band on. Each one of the bands we put on a bird here at Long Point have a unique number, these small aluminum bands, a unique number. So even if you're not a bird watcher and you find this purple martin at your house, you know, uh, one way or another, dead or alive, you don't have to know that it's a purple martin. You just have to be able to read the numbers, report them online, and then we'll be able to say, hey, you found a purple martin that we banded here in June. 2021. So Ryan, Ryan, you basically put them in the bag to calm them down? That's yeah. 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 So when they're in these bags, they tend to calm down. If you have them out, they can see what's going on and they're a little bit more scared. Uh, it's kind of like reptiles. You cover their eyes, they calm down and they're generally okay. Some of them will, you have certain birds like cat birds and wrens, they're always yelling about something, but most birds will calm down when they're in the bag. See, maybe they should try that with me. Just put me in a bag and be calming down a lot. <laughs> All right, so. The special pliers here for opening and closing the bands. And the band just goes on the bird like that. If spin, make sure it fits nice and loose, but not so loose that it's going to slip over the toes or over the ankle joint here. And not so tight that it can't spin at all. And these purple martins, their legs will actually get a little smaller as they get older, believe it or not. Right now they're full, filled with fat and fluid and stuff like that. That'll all get metabolized and, and that band will fit even better um, in a week or so. So all these feathers are just growing in now. These wing feathers. These are the same feathers that's going to carry this purple martin if it survives all the way to the Amazon uh, this, um, this fall. And hopefully it'll come right back here. It'll probably nest, in the, if not in this colony, one of the other colonies on the point. They're pretty, they're pretty uh, faithful to their sort of uh, uh, native range, if you will. It's going to go all the way to the Amazon.
hang out there for uh, most of the winter. All right, what else do we need here for this wing wing. The wing. All right. Now this wing is not fully formed. When a Purple Martin's wing is fully formed, it'll be more than twice this length. So that's 70 millimeters. It's going to be another couple weeks before the sucker is ready to fly any distance. See this big fleshy gape here. If we could get it to open its mouth, if we had a dragonfly for it, it might open its mouth right up and be <laughs> bright yellow. And where they nest inside those dark, um, those dark gourds, you know, there's no light in there. But this acts like a sort of a beacon or a stimulant to the parents, right? They see that big orange or yellow mouth and they're like, must fill with food, <laughs> right? And it just, it just turns them on to do that. Um, all right, there you go, Ryan. That's our last one from this, from this brood. So Ryan's going to return these to their box. In this box is your seven, box, I believe. This is the other box. Okay. Yep. No. Box seven. Seven. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Ryan, have you ever yeah. uh, carried a bag of birds and then tripped and fell and it opened up and they all escaped? No, no, no. Hmm. Very professional environment, so bird safety is number one priority. So never done it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even remember the first question. Do you want me to ask myself? No. <laughs> okay, favorite food stop. Favorite food stop? Oh my god, you threw that right at me. Um, like for taste or experience? For experience. Uh, actually, the um, in the town of Selkirk, I forget the name. Um, the the couple that had the oh kitchen something. Just uh, um, emphasize uh, one main thing I wanted to do during this trip is promote local businesses uh, because of COVID and you know they're not doing well right now. So we we really went to a lot of places to eat, eat uh, and take out uh, basically because that was our, our philosophy. Are the okay. interviewers allowed to, am I allowed to drink while I'm doing Yeah, interview? go ahead and have a swig. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what was the best perch place? Yeah, it's all a blur because I had perch I, and, or walleye every day. Favorite beach along Lake Erie? I'm not a beach person, so I'm not one that would sit at the beach at all. I'd go on a nature trail and do all that stuff way before. But for visual, and people would disagree with me, uh, but the one at uh, Wheatley, when we went out for that morning hike before we left to go on, on to the next uh, park, and it was all eroded, it, 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 you know, it was basically Mother Nature was knocking the heck out of it. But wow, I loved it. It was really cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is the gear that you wish you had here that's at home? Oh, more scotch. That's, got, not, that's not gear. It is gear for me. Like, I, no. um, it, here's the thing about it. Like, it's a great winery down here. Breweries uh, all over the place. Fantastic. But you go to a small town LSBO and you got to improve your scotch. That's what I'm saying. I was drinking blended. It was, it was a nightmare gear that I wish I brought. Well, you're right about the pop-up tarp. I mean, every single night, and it, and it rained every single night on our trip, uh, I, 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 it, I had to be a master tarp person to put that tarp up because you're in an open area with not that many trees. And if there is a tree, there's poison ivy around it. <laughs> so um, I, I, I did okay, but every single night putting that tarp up was a challenge. So if we just had a pop-up one, that would make a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. But that, that, you know, it shows me like I, I usually go north and there's trees everywhere. Um, here it's just a wide open area. So you have to really think beyond uh, the, uh, the horizon. Favorite footwear. 
Well, obviously I yeah. should have worn my boots today oh. when I was taking the tarp down because I got stung by something wearing sandals. In what campground will you bring your grandchildren to? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. I'm a nerd. I would I would go to Selkirk because it, someone has to show those kids that those oak in there. The, they were amazing. The trees in there were oh my lord. They I ju, ju, and Kamoka. I mean that hike we did. The the trees we saw in there, unbelievable. So yeah, but the kids aren't gonna like that. They're gonna like Rondo. I I, I get it. Rondo's a really good family park. This is a long point. Really good family park. Wheatley is a really good family park, but I think a lot of people say at Wheatley, so then go to the, go to the um, uh, Point Pelee because there's not really much camping there. Um, I, there wasn't one here I wouldn't take them to. Last question. Last question? Okay, let me think. I have to think of one. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Favorite small town that you would retire in oh god <laughs> <laughs> the one i wanted to go to and show you but we're kind of delayed that day was U Uru? no i can't pronounce it right irio irio thank I, you i don't know if that's yeah. right or not that's that's a nice place but um because of the atmosphere and the people we met especially at the museum um selkirk that that to me characterized uh, southwestern Ontario small town kindness, uh, purity, and uh, history, loss of history. I think I'm all out of questions. Really? Did I ask you a gear question yet? You did, but I don't think I answered it. Um, favorite, favorite, no, not favorite, the most important piece of gear that we brought sense of humor no that doesn't that's not a piece of gear on, love for it. each other that's lovely that's very sweet Kevin okay. but that's not a piece of gear oh the bucket the red bucket <laughs> it is same as last year when we went north we got this red bucket we used it for everything washing our clothes washing our feet um, uh, washing the dishes yeah we did everything uh, with that red bucket we, we didn't have a lot of misadventures, really. Like, uh, if you think about it, we had major storms, we had major heat. Uh, my dog had the trots big time for a long, long time. We had to get special medication for, for her because of the heat. Um, Oliver threw up in the car today. That was lovely. Uh, I know you hate me talking about it, but but he did throw up in the car. Um, I had a weird eye thing where my, my blood vein burst in my eye. I got stung in my leg. Uh, I don't think much happened to you. Um, yeah, so that's lucky. Um, but overall, that's what kind of happens when you're going on a camping trip, isn't it? It's what's called an adventure. gonna cry when you're gone Where will you go? Won't you miss the ones you know? I'll be here, hanging on, waiting for your call Seems like time As a wave passing by Leave a mark in our minds Turn the memories River's gonna cry when you're Gone, 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 gone River's gonna cry when you're Gone, gone
I can smell it. Oh, this is great, fantastic. Well, Angel, it was nice knowing you. Yeah, yeah, nice to you. But there's rumor we're going back. I'm going camping again. Um, I think I'll run away from home. <laughs>